Hello guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show how I set up our temperature and humidity sensors. Once the sensors are up and running, I will connect other electrical components to perform some automation in our bedroom. This video is the first part of this DIY home automation series. First, we will set up these sensors and then expand this project to include automation in succeeding videos. So make sure to subscribe to my channel. Just a reminder, if you are to recreate this project, please avoid skipping any part of this video to ensure that you get all the necessary information needed to build this project safely. As for the codes used in this project, please check the description below on where you can get them. Let's begin with the components needed as well as the wiring connection. I will be using this power bank module which is ideal for four cells of 18650 lithium ion batteries. The capacity of the power bank I am building is 10,000 mAh. This power bank has a built-in, overcurrent, overvoltage, and undervoltage protection. Also, there are outputs on both sides that can give 5 volts and 3 volts. Later and in succeeding videos, I will show you how handy those outputs will be when building expanded projects. The next component that we will need is the Arduino Nano. When shopping for this type of board in the market, you will most likely encounter two versions of these, the Arduino Nano or the Nano-compatible CH340. While these two versions operate under the same parameters, the difference is the USB driver of each board. The Arduino Nano has an FTDI chip and the Nano-compatible has a CH340 chip. Later also in this video, I will show you the difference between these two when uploading your codes. For this project I am building, I am using the CH340 version. For sensing temperature and humidity, we will be using the DHT11 sensor. When using this type of sensor, please take note of its range because this model can only detect temperature from 0 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, which means if you live in a place where temperature can go below 0 Celsius, you should use a different model such as the DHT22. Finally, the last electrical component that we will need is the TM1637. This is the display module we will use to show the readings from the sensor. Next, let's check out the wiring connection. The DHT11 has three pins labeled as signal, VCC, and GND. Connect the VCC pin to the 3-volt positive of the power bank. Then the GND pin to the negative of the bank. As for the signal pin, we will connect this to the D2 pin of the Arduino Nano. The TM1637 display has four pins labeled as VCC, GND, DIO, and CLK. We will connect the VCC pin to the positive of the 3 volt and the GND pin to the negative. For the DIO pin or digital input and output, we will connect this to the D3 pin of the Nano. And for the CLK or clock pin, we will connect this to the D4 pin of the Nano. As for the Nano board, we will use a mini BUSB cable and connect this to the USB output of the power bank. Now that we have discussed a wiring diagram, let's begin the mounting process. I will be using a picture frame for this project. This is perfect for my needs as I plan to hang this on our bedroom wall, where it is close to the appliances that I wanted to control through automation. Good practice in wiring is to make the connection at the back of your board to make it clean on the front side. To achieve this, you would need to punch holes into the board by using a drill, rotary, or dremel. So first, arrange everything on the board and identify the markings to be drilled. As you can see, I made the holes already based on where I intend to organize the components. To mount and wire all the components, I will need jumper wires, and the gauge of the wire I am using is rated at 22 AWG. The size of this wire is more than enough to handle the current that will be flowing to this circuit. I will now continue the mounting and begin the wiring of the components into the board.
Now, as for the Nano board, although we will only need D2, D3 and D4 pins with this project. What I will do is to wire more pins so that I have ready pins when needed as I expand this system. To avoid making mistakes, I have written a cheat sheet on my bench for my reference. I will now complete the wiring connection based on the diagram discussed earlier. Now that the wiring connection is completed, the next step is to upload our code to the Nano. Plug the mini BUSB from the Nano and plug the other end to your laptop. Now let's go to our computer and open the Arduino IDE. If you have not yet installed the IDE on your computer, go to your browser and search for Arduino IDE download. Go to the official website of Arduino and download the latest version of the IDE. The next step is to install it as you would normally do when installing other applications to your computer. Let's go back to the IDE and delete the default codes. Copy the codes for this project and paste them into the IDE. Please check the description of this video below on how you can get the code. The next step is to include the library for the DHT11 and TM1637. First, we will add the library for DHT11. And to do that, go to Tools, then select Manage Libraries and search DHT11 in the search bar. Look for DHT Sensor Library by Adafruit. Select the latest version and click Install. In my case, the library is already installed. Next, include the library for TM1637. Look for Grove 4 Digit Display Library by Seed Studio and click Install. We are almost ready to upload the codes to the Nano. For the remaining steps, select the board you are using, which in this case is Arduino Nano. Next is to choose the processor. If you are unsure which one to choose, you can do trial and error, select the first one, and if you get an error during upload, then select the other one. I am using an old board, so I will select the Atmega 328P, old bootloader. Next is to choose the COM, and this is where you will see the difference between the FTDI and CH340 driver we discussed earlier in this video. If you are using the Arduino Nano with FTDI chip, your IDE should automatically detect it, and no additional download is needed. However, for the CH340 driver, you will need to install it separately on your computer, because without it, you will get an error, and you won't be able to upload your codes. To install, go to your browser then search for the CH340 driver. Download the file and then install it on your computer.
To check if your computer can now detect your board, go to the device manager of your computer and look for the port. If you can read the CH340, then you have successfully installed the driver. Now let us go back to the Arduino IDE and double check the setup, and if everything is in order, click the upload button. If the upload is successful, it will read done uploading below the ID. It's time to test if our build is working. Insert the batteries to the power bank, then unplug the Arduino from your computer and plug it into the power bank. One last reminder, make sure that you insert the batteries in correct polarity. Positive to positive and negative to negative. As you can see, the display is now showing various readings. The first one is the humidity level in percentage, followed by temperature in Fahrenheit, and the last is the temperature in Celsius. Now that everything is working as expected, it's time to fix all our wiring. We will also need to solder this connection. Check out the next video in this series and learn how to expand this project to perform automation. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.